Well guys, here in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Netflix earnings. And I did mention this in the last video I posted, which was talking about three things to watch out for in the stock market this week. I'll link that video down below in the description if you haven't checked it out yet, but I did cover some different things in that video that you might want to be aware of. But anyway, in that video, I talked about how this is gonna be a big couple of weeks for earnings and that a lot of companies were reporting earnings and Netflix was one of them. Netflix has seen some huge growth over the first two quarters, mainly because everyone was forced to watch Netflix with nothing going on, everything was shut down, so people had nothing to do but sit there and watch TV. However, there were some concerns around Netflix that made investors a little bit nervous going into this earnings report. One of those areas of concern is the insane growth. Netflix saw a total of 26 million new subscribers in the first two quarters alone, compared to 28 million in all of 2019. Correspondingly, the guidance Netflix put out only saw 2.5 million subscribers, new subscribers coming in in this quarter. This compares to the 6.8 million new subscribers they had in the third quarter of last year. And another thing Netflix investors were concerned about is if they're gonna be able to keep up with this growth. And in other words, I mean, are they gonna be able to put out enough TV shows, enough Netflix original series, enough movies, for new subscribers to be entertained and keep coming back for more. Now the numbers are out and the earnings are officially public. We're gonna be talking about those and bringing those down, what I think it means for the company and if I'm buying Netflix right now. But first, as always guys, if you don't mind hitting that thumbs up button, that helps me out in a huge, huge way. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to get this video out for more people. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're coming up on 200 subscribers here, slowly but surely. I'm really excited for what's coming for this channel. I hope all you guys that are watching this now stick around for when we get to 2,000, and who knows, maybe even 200,000 someday. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, guys. Anyway, back to the point of the video. Before Netflix released its quarter three earnings, Wall Street had written off estimates that Netflix had provided for this quarter. You guys will know this if you watched my last video because I talked about it. Wall Street estimated 3.3 million new subscribers for Netflix for quarter three. And that final number actually came in at 3.57 million. Netflix misses on subscriber additions and EPS. Netflix reported earnings for its third quarter of 2020 after the bell on Tuesday. The company fell short of analyst estimates on earnings per share and global paid net subscriber additions, but exceeded expectations on revenue. Shares fell as much as 6% during after hours trading. As for the numbers, earnings per share, $1.74 versus $2.14 expected. Revenue, $6.44 billion versus $6.38 billion expected. So they did barely beat on revenue just by over half a million dollars. They did squeak out a little bit of a gain there. Global paid net subscribers, 2.2 million versus 3.57 million expected. So they weren't too far off of their estimates and guidance was set 2.2 million by Netflix, but they were not quite where analysts wanted them to be. As for the sector that did contribute the largest for this quarter, that was the Asia Pacific region, which made up 46% of the new paid subscribers. The company attributed the slow growth to its record first half results. The slack was considered a good buy early in the pandemic as stay at home orders left consumers looking for ways to fill their time. And I would agree with this. Back in March during the early phase of the pandemic, this stock was a great buy because there was literally nothing else to do. If you look back at the chart in mid-March, now look carefully here, this stock was in the 330 range, nowhere near 400 and definitely nowhere near 500. So this stock has definitely seen some growth since the pandemic started and everything went into shutdown mode. The state of the pandemic and its impact continues to make projects very uncertain, but as the world hopefully recovers in 2021, we would expect that our growth will revert back to levels similar to pre-COVID levels. As for guidance for the fourth quarter, Netflix did provide guidance of 16 million paid subscriber additions. This number is still down from the quarter four of 2019, which in 2019, in quarter four, they brought in 8.8 .8 million new subscribers. So what do I think of these earnings? What do I think of Netflix now that these earnings have come out? Where do I think it's going? Am I buying it? Let's start off with some of the positives here. First, look at this chart Netflix since 2015. And let's just pencil in 2020. They have 195 million subscribers right now. Say they get another 10 million. They even shatter the numbers. They beat the numbers from quarter four 2019 and they end up bringing in 10 million in this next quarter. So they end up with 205 million for 2020 in total. Do I think they're going to bring in that many? No, I don't think they're going to bring in that many. But for the sake of this argument, let's just go with that. That's around 20% growth for the year, which is a lot. That is some really significant growth that who knows if that's gonna be sustainable once this virus goes away, we're gonna to have to wait and see. But the point is, it's not something completely astronomical that you've never ever seen before. And even with the decline from not only the second quarter to the third quarter in 2020, but looking at the third quarter in 2019 last year, they're still up. They're still gonna be up on the year regardless. And that's what Reed Hastings was just saying in the conference call. Looking at it from a year over year perspective, regardless, Netflix is gonna be up at the end of the year unless every single TV in the world just breaks the next 45 minutes. You also got to remember there were essentially no sports at all from March to July. No baseball, no basketball, no football, nothing. No one had anything to do except watch Netflix because nothing else was on TV. They also mentioned on the conference call that they were going to give everyone a free Netflix trial over a certain weekend. They were going to do this in India and see how it worked out. 
I think this is a great idea because it could definitely drive in some more traffic and bring us some new subscribers. And sometimes you gotta do that in business. You're not gonna make money directly, but at the end of the day, if you use something like that indirectly, it could pay off in the long run. Revenue, 20 billion in 2019. So let's say for the rest of the year, quarter four, they bring in seven billion. They beat their estimates, they bring in seven billion next quarter. Again, this is a huge number they're working with here, some pretty big revenue growth, but it's not something you never heard of before. And the guidance the management team gave, they also were close. They didn't come out and say they were gonna see another 13 million users, another 20 billion in revenue, or some ridiculous numbers in the third quarter. They were really close with their numbers, and I think that's important to note here. And after listening to the conference call, I think it was reassuring because all of the management team didn't really have any sense of panic. They were like, hey guys, this is what's gonna happen. We saw some growth, we're gonna see this decline. It is what it is, we gotta go through it and move on. And another thing, they're still the leader in this space and it's not even close. They currently have 195 million users. That compares to Disney Plus who has 60 million users and HBO Max that's 36 million paid users. Netflix is the leader in this space and it's not even close, guys. It's not even close. And analysts still see this company growing next year. Next year, analysts predict Netflix will grow 42% and for the next five years, 35% annually. Now that might be a little ambitious, but still analysts are saying that. And I think that's important to note here. Granted, you got to develop your own opinions. I don't know if Netflix is going to grow 35% over the next five years or 40% next year, but I think it's important to at least look at that and to take it in consideration. And another thing, analysts still see this company growing 70% next year top line. And it's not like something ridiculous like Zoom, where you're going to see the decline from like 700% to, I don't know, 17% or whatever it was in that video. I broke the Zoom stock news. And in addition, more of a speculative opinion here. This is going to be very speculative. I think almost everyone would say they wouldn't be surprised to see a second wave. It seems the cases are rising. They're triple what they were in June. Cases are definitely going up. Fauci said the low number of cases per day back in June or whatever it was when the virus was kind of subsiding and dying down. It wasn't not as low as it should have been. It should have been around 10,000. Fauci said it was around 20,000 cases per day. So in saying that, what if the country gets shut down again? Now, will that happen? I don't know. I hope it doesn't happen for a lot of reasons, but what if it does? It could happen in theory. I don't, like I just said, I don't think it'll happen, but I don't think you can throw out that situation again for a lot of different reasons. But would I be surprised by any means if further restrictions were put into place? Absolutely not. I don't see that as a surprise at all. I honestly expect that to happen very shortly. And the first place I think of these restrictions are restaurants. You're not gonna be able to have as many people in the restaurant, one, because you can't do outside seating because in a lot of states in the United States, it's too cold. And you can't just pack people inside because you can't have as many people in there because there's obviously gotta be some sort of social distancing and you've got a capacity limit. You just can't. So obviously restaurants numbers are gonna decline and there's gonna be more restrictions put in place leading to less to do. People aren't gonna wanna go outside, they're not gonna play golf, they're not gonna play pickup basketball. They're gonna stay inside because it's too cold. And plus, in the winter time, people don't wanna move. They just wanna cuddle up and not move. It's a fact. When the weather is cold, your body just does not wanna move. That's why when you wake up in the morning, you have such a hard time getting up because the weather's too cold and your body just shuts down and doesn't wanna move at all. Which means more people are gonna be forced to watch Netflix. But then again, where does Netflix go from here? I always say the sky is the limit, but has Netflix already reached the sky here? Do I dare say there's a situation where Netflix can shatter these numbers again next year like they did in 2019? I don't know, because like I said in many videos, 2020 is an indicator that anything can happen at any time, but I don't know. They're also rejected for a lighter production load in 2021. They are working on different series and different content for 2021 right now to get more stuff up and running, but at this point, they are projected to see a lighter workload meaning that will people be interested for the entirety of 2021? The market cap's also skyrocketed. At the time of me filming this, Netflix market cap has gone up about 100 billion so far year to date. That's billion with a B, not million with an M. Price to sales ratio, 10. Price to book ratio, 25. They do have a forwarded PE of 60 currently and a trailing PE of 89. But to be honest, although that is high, I don't really have a concern with either one of those PE ratios. Because if you look at the forward and trailing PE of the last two quarters of 2019, the trailing PE was much higher. And while the forward PE was a lot lower in the third quarter of 2019 at 48, the final quarter of Q4, actually the forward PE did match up with the current forward PE. So now that we've broken all that down, we've gone into all this detail, am I going to buy Netflix? And the answer is no. I think just the valuation for Netflix right now is a little too rich for my blood when it's all said and done. I just feel like there's better deals out there in the market right now and my money's better allocated elsewhere. But say I bought Netflix back in March when it was in the 330s and I held it all through this time, I think I would still be holding it. Mainly because I just think five, 10 years down the road, Netflix is gonna be doing a lot better numbers to this based on everything I know about the company and based on the direction I envision the company going in. And no 
no way do I think at the end game this is Netflix ceiling and I do see it going higher and higher as time goes on. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and be going over Netflix earnings. As always, hit that thumbs up button that helps you in a huge way. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know of what you think of Netflix and where it's going in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next video.